Aima is an all-in-one customizable hyperspectral microscope delivering equally high spatial and spectral resolution. It rapidly maps photoluminescence, electroluminescence, reflectance, and transmittance in the vis, near, sphere spectral range. It enables non-destructive characterization of solar cells, semiconductors, and nanomaterials, or complex analysis of life, in vitro, and unstained biological samples. It can be configured with an upright or an inverted microscope. First, here is the upright configuration. On the left is shown the laser and the beam shaping module, ensuring a uniform illumination over the entire field of view. The hypercube contains the bright gratings and will filter the incoming signal from the sample. It is located on the top of the microscope and is connected to the camera, either a CCD camera, in-gas camera, or both. IMA can also be configured with an inverted microscope. In this case, the hypercube is mounted on the side of the microscope. Please note that the laser and beam shaping module can be installed on either side of the system. The setup is shown using Zephyr 1.7, an in-gas camera designed and manufactured by Photon ETC. Turning on the system is quite easy. You turn on the camera and the hypercube. Then you sync the apparatus with FISPEC on the computer. FISPEC is Photon ETC own control and analysis software, which we'll use for today's demonstration. Once everything is turned on and connected, the system is ready to be used. Here is shown FISPEC interface. On the left, you can find all the parameters of the experiment. First, the camera parameters, such as the exposure time, the binning, and the possibility to average images. It is also possible to control the distance between the microscope and the sample, and to select the objective magnification. Finally, you can control the mode. Right now, we are in band pass mode, or filter mode, where only a small bandwidth of wavelength is selected. It is possible to get the unfiltered image with the broadband mode. The first step of the experiment consists in focusing the image. In order to do so, a standard halogen lamp is directed to the sample, and we adjust the distance between the objective and the sample. Once we are happy with the result, we can turn off the white light and turn on the laser. We are using a 532 nanometer laser to excite perovskite crystals from Pablo do Campo Research Group from Newcastle University. What we were seeing before corresponded to standard reflectance. Now we see photoluminescence coming from the sample. Every bright spot corresponds to a photon being emitted around 770 nanometers. PhiSpec allows to build sequences of acquisition, where the laser, the spectral range, and post-processing steps can be implemented. After making sure the laser shutter is open, the next step consists of the hyperspectral acquisition, where we name the data, we determine the spectral range and the spectral steps between each image. For the demonstration, we will go from 680 nanometers to 900 nanometers with steps of 7 nanometers, which means that every image will be separated by 7 nanometers. Then, we add some post-processing manipulations. After making sure the laser shutter is open, we are now ready to start the acquisition. As the system is scanning through the wavelengths, we can see the stages of the acquisition. An approximation of the time remaining is also indicated by the status of the hyperspectral acquisition. We see that the photoluminescence signal is quite strong in the case of perovskite. This is why the exposure time per image is as small as 0.1 second, and we can stay at really low power density, around 10 suns. I hope you can appreciate the speed at which the whole sequence is being conducted. The acquisition took around 40 seconds, and now the post-processing is being applied. Here is the final post-processed cube. We can go over each acquired wavelength by sliding the bar at the top. As we move along the wavelengths, we see different types of domains on the samples. A bright region means that photons are being emitted at the wavelength shown in the top bar. Now we will leave the image at around 785 nanometers since we know that perovskite has its peak of emission around this wavelength. We will now place some targets on specific pixels. As a reminder, each pixel provides a photoluminescent spectrum. 
Since we are working with a megapixel sensor, we've just acquired a million spectra. Each target, once drag and drop in the graph, will draw the photoluminescent spectrum of the pixel. Instead of individual points, we can also do the average of a region of interest, a rectangle or an ellipse. The results of this region will give an average spectrum of all the pixels included within the area. Note that even in the darker region, there is still some signal coming from the sample. Let's have a look at the different maps that can be made using PhySpec and the cube we just acquired, starting with the map of maximum intensity, showing the highest intensity in arbitrary units that each region of the sample reached during the acquisition. The yellower is a region, the higher is its photoluminescence intensity. The false color image provides a rapid overview of the luminescence efficiency of a sample. A good solar cell is as luminescent as possible. Such a map provides information on non-radiative losses and indirectly on the efficiency of the cell. Another interesting map that we can do is a map of the photoluminescent central wavelength. This map gives the wavelength at which the maximum intensity, or spectrum peak, occurs in nanometers. This map allows to clearly see the shift in wavelength. In this case, the lighter regions have a PL central wavelength around 800 nanometers and the darker region around 760 nanometers. It is also possible to stack a false color map on top of the data and make sure that the maxima found with the analysis correspond to what was acquired. Looking at the purple target, we see that the bright regions are indeed exhibiting a PL maximum intensity around 795 nanometers. The green target is located in a darker region and presents a maximum of intensity around 765 nanometers. Different spectral signature can be assigned to different phases or defects in the sample. We demonstrated that IMA can rapidly capture the big optical picture by providing information on sample formation, uniformity, losses, and degradation. In addition to the characterization of uniformity and losses in solar cells or LEDs, IMA can be used to study biological phenomena such as tracking multicolor markers, identifying diseased tissue, or monitoring cellular environment. For more information, visit us at photonetc.com or send us an email, we'll be happy to answer you.